Hello, my lovely knitters. Uh, welcome back to Our Knits and Pearls. I'm your host, Aro of Our Own Knits and Pearls. As always, you can find my Ravelry, Instagram, Ko-Fi, Patreon, linked in the description below, as well as links to any dyers, makers, designers that I talk about in today's episode. Um, really quickly, you may notice I sound different and I might be moving my mouth different. Um, if you didn't see it in my Instagram stories, I had to get a tooth extracted. So right now I have this big old gap in, in my mouth with no tooth and um, I have this little fake retainer in. So um, there's a, still a slight lisp when I talk and I really hope it's not as noticeable for other people as it is to me because it makes me want to tear out like the fillings of my inner ear. I hate it so much. Um, but I'm not trying to dwell on that. I'm trying to be positive and there's so many things to be positive about. Um, namely, tomorrow I am flying out to Denver for, um, well, it's, it's for a number of reasons. One, I'm going to see my favorite band of all time, Bleachers. They're playing at Red Rocks, which is like, I think probably the coolest venue in maybe the world. Um, I'm so excited and I've always wanted to go to a show at Red Rocks and it's my favorite band. So like combined, it's really the coolest and I'm so excited. Um, also, uh, Wilbury Fiber Co. and Explorer Knits, um, Bethany of Wilbury Fiber Co. and Allie of Explorer Knits have offered to give me studio tours of their new studios because they uh, recently, both of them, at the, like almost the same time, it was funny, uh, both of them got commercial guy spaces and they've invited me to see it and I'm so excited uh, because I haven't met Bethany in person. Um, we did like a group knit night call with a few of us before, but I've never met her in person. But of course I know Allie, you guys know that I, I hung out with her and the team when we were in Portland for a bit and I'm just so excited. Um, obviously I love seeing how the magic happens behind Dyers because it's just, it's magic to me. And anything that helps demystify the process is a really cool way to see past, you know, what I see, which is when everything's already dyed and beautiful and I can buy it. Um, but I'm so excited and they're great friends and I'm, uh, yeah, and I am going to see some yarn stores, of course. Um, I'm only planning on visiting three. Um, I will talk more about that when I come back, but I am really, really, really excited. Um, but that's tomorrow, I'm flying out tomorrow. Uh, the purpose of today's episode, well one, as always, I'm gonna catch you guys up on uh, what I've been making, what I bought. Um, actually, not a lot, not a lot, but, but still. Um, and then uh, I really wanted to talk about summertime hand knit. And if you're a Lana Del Rey fan, at least for her older stuff, every time I say summertime hand knits, I think of her, in her voice like summertime sadness, but instead she's singing summertime hand knits. Um, that might just be me. But anyway, yeah, I really wanted to take today's episode to talk about summer fibers because I don't know how it is where y'all are at, but in Salt Lake, it's hot. It's real hot and I hate heat so much, so much. Um, so I'm really excited to be using more summer fibers. And I'm gonna to talk to you about my experience with that. Um, and I guess I should jump right into it because I try to talk about what I'm wearing first because I know that's gonna distract y'all. Um, and that leads us right into it. So this is the Imogen Tea by, I think it was Carrie Bostick Hoge, Hoge, Hodge? How do you say her name? Carrie Bostick, H-O-G-E, that one. This is the Imogen T and uh, I did a, quite a few modifications. So the Imogen T is actually like more like a cap sleeve in her sample and many other people's on Ravelry, you can see, but I chose to mod it. I did almost a short bell sleeve and it's really simple where you pick up from the underarm in the center of it um, every inch I would just increase one stitch each side of the center and uh, I blocked it out to have that kind of bell sleeve and it's super flattering. The same thing on the body as well. It's a slight A-line shape. Let me just stand up a little bit. And yeah, that's, that's how it looks. 
I really, I really love this tee. I made this many years ago and it's still one of my favorite knits possibly ever because one, it's a summer fiber. So I can, I could wear it when I lived in Austin. That's when I knit it because it's so hot in Austin and I was always sweating, like always. I'm so sorry if that's TMI, but like it's so hot over there. And, um, but I really wanted to wear knit garments that I made. And the, I used to, I used to really, really be into lace. I'm not that way anymore. I think if I had to choose like a non stockinette texture, I think I would just do texture these days. But like, uh, I was so into lace at the time. I'm not sure why, but this one is really, really beautiful. Um, I love the drape of the linen. So I'm gonna show you a bunch of projects right now. And this, as well as these, are all in Quince & Co linen in the two weights of linen that they have. And um, this one is the lighter weight linen, which is Sparrow, I wanna say? Cause the thick one is Kestrel. So the thin one has to be Sparrow, right? I don't know, I can never keep these lines straight. Anyway, I'll put it in the description below as always. But let me try to go in order. I have an order in mind. So this one is in Sparrow and this one is also in Sparrow. So Sparrow is actually a fingering weight linen yarn and it's 100% organic uh, Italian linen, I believe. And the drape is really something else. Um, you may have seen this one in my on my Instagram. So um, I made myself one and my mom liked it so much that uh, that Mother's Day, I made her a matching one using the same colors and everything. And we have a, a picture of us in our matching sweaters. And that's probably one of my favorite photos of all time because um, she looks really cute in it. Uh, yeah, but um, it's a fingering weight linen. Linen, if you haven't worked with it before, one, when you work with it before you block it, it will feel, well, it's smooth, but there's no elasticity with linen. So it can leave a callus, it, it, it does. I have a linen callus for knitting just cause the way that I, I push the needle off. Not everybody develops that by the way, depending on how you hold your yarn, etc. But the way that I knit, I end up having a linen callus. But the process of working with it, it's not as painful as cotton. To me, cotton in my hand feels so dry that it's a it's both dry and inelastic so i feel like it it's a really painful process for me whereas linen it's just the lack of elasticity but once you block it out god the drape is just like like look at that look at that like it's just it's so good it's so good ah i love it um yeah so for a simple raglan dubro i think is very very oh that's what this pattern is called i should have said that too oh my god what is my brain doing uh, Dubro by Michio. Michio. I don't know if you can understand me with this stupid lisp. I'm sorry, guys. Um, but yeah, so this is just, it's a raglan with stripe detailing, kind of like the coloring book raglan by uh, Amy Schur, I guess is the most contemporary example. But um, this is in fingering weight. It's really comfortable. I've worn it many times. Uh, my mom actually wore this many, many times. It was a uh, it was really cool to see her wear my hand nets. She only wore the linen things I made her. I think I've talked about that before. She only wore the linen things because she was less afraid of ruining them. Um, so that's another plus. Linen, um, like it stands up to a good, like uh, if you need to, you can wash it in the sink, use your hands. Um, I don't machine wash anything. Even if it says super wash, machine washable, I do not trust. I do not trust that. I don't trust the machine. If I have to wash a knit, I will use my hands um, and just block. But anyway, that's my opinion. Everything I say on these videos ever is my opinion and my experience with making. I'm not saying that you have to follow it the same way because I guess what I love about knitting and making is that there are a million ways to do the same thing and everybody has their own preference. And I am never ever gonna be that person that says, oh, well, you shouldn't do that. Like. I have some of my really good friends loved seamed sweaters and y'all know I would never touch a seamed sweater in my life. I would never do that to myself, but I'm never going to tell her that she's a dumb for choosing to make something like that. And I, I don't think she tells me the same the other way around either that I 
avoid seems like they're the plague. Um, but yeah, that's just to say, do what you want, make what you want, make the way you want it. It's fine. As long as you're happy with how it looks and wear it, can wear it, what? who cares? Ah. Okay, anyway, I'm getting off subject. Um, those are the fingering weight. These two are the fingering weight options of Quince & Co. Linen. I believe it's their Sparrow line, but don't quote me on that. Because I feel like every time I record these videos, just shooting from the hip, because you guys know I don't edit, I'm wrong about something horrible. And then I watch it again and I'm like, oh God, I should have Googled. But uh, here we are. Now we're gonna get to the thicker ones. So Kestrel, Kestrel I worked with more because it's a, it's a heavy DK light worsted, I wanna say. It's more like a tape, whereas the fingering weight linen, it is, um, linen the way it works up, it, it's, it's not as round, obviously, because there's not a lot of elasticity. It doesn't have that bounce that wool yarn does. It tends to look a little bit flat because it's a plant fiber and it's been stretched and pressed and etc. But um, the way that the worsted weight one works, Kestrel, is it's actually a like a tube of little tiny knits. I should have brought one. I don't, I think maybe I have an end maybe that I didn't weave in all the way. Darn, why was I so fastidious? I can't find a single unwoven in end. Oh, no, I spoke too soon, I found one. Come here, come here, come here. Yeah, okay, found one. So I'm not sure if you can see it, but the way these fibers work, it's actually a knitted tube and when this yarn first came out Quince and Co was suggesting that people like you know when you join for the next skein they're like oh yeah if you take a little tiny needle like a sewing needle and like sew them together and I'm like who has the time to do that so like yeah you can see it's it's a little tiny tube with like mesh yeah um I don't do that I just hold it double together at some point, I think there's a point where you can see where I did that on here. I know I had to. God, I can't find anything these days. Sorry. Um. Yeah. So I think I did it right here. Yeah. You can you can see it when I um hold it up. I think against the light. Yeah. You see that dark line? That's where I held it together. I just didn't care. You can also just start knitting with the next one and then weave in the ends later. It works fine. Um, linen is a little bit slipperier than wool. Slipperier. Sorry, that's really hard to say with my retainer. <laughs> it's more slippery. That's better. It's more slippery than wool yarn. But I've been doing the weaving in, knitting together, and I've never noticed an issue of it coming apart. So um, I haven't noticed that problem. And I wear my linen knits probably the most. Um, I really think I do, especially just historically, because if you guys forget, I lived in Austin for seven years and it was so hot from the majority, overwhelming majority of the year. So if I wore hand knits, they were linen and I wore them a lot. Um, yeah, I feel like I just showed all of the ones to you just now. So let me just go back to the first one. Ba -ba -ba. This one is the Deshane by uh, Layla Raven. And uh, I really loved this one. This is, uh, it was a fun stitch pattern in the center. You know, like I said, I really liked lace for a time. I was really into it, especially a center panel of lace so that I could breathe in the stockinette sections, just hammer through the lace and then breathe in the stockinette again. But anyway, I really like this one. My mom loved this one so much that she asked for a matching one. Um, so now I have two, one very, very large one and one this sized one. I'm planning on bringing this to Denver, by the way, because it will be quite hot while I'm there. Um, but yeah, that's the Deshane. That's a really good uh, linen pattern and it's not difficult. Um, the lace isn't super difficult. Um, that's what I liked about Quince & Co patterns. So Brooklyn Tweed, their patterns, I think tend to be overly complicated. Whereas Quince & Co goes the other way. They go very simple, um, at least they used to. I don't know about these days. I haven't been really keeping up with their newer patterns, but 
I really like that they went for a classic simple silhouettes. They don't require you to seam everything because that's another complaint with Brooklyn Tweed. Like everything, even a, even a sleeve, like top down, they're like, yeah, just seam it. Like just do, do it flat and seam it. I'm like, why? Why? Anyway, but that's just my opinion. Uh, yes. And then this one, this pink one is Mary Fields by Pam Allen. Uh, I actually, I knit this for my mom for Mother's Day while I was in law school. Um, it has a slip stitch texture. And that's another thing I really like about linen. You'd think because it's such a shiny fabric that it's hard to get, like it's hard to see detail, but I have done a lot of different projects in linen and I think it works well with both texture and lace and plain old stockinette. So I really, I really enjoy it. And it really is much, much easier to wear in the summer when you're not dying of heat stroke. And then this one, this red one, I've gotten a lot of questions about because I've, I've worn it in my stories. Uh, I generally wear this to concerts because it's cute. I knit it and it lets me not be a hot, sticky, sweaty mess. Again, going back to that issue. And this one is um, Myra. Myra by hmm, Elizabeth Smith. Elizabeth Smith. Elizabeth Smith. I can't talk with this thing. Um, yeah, so it's uh, slightly cropped. And obviously you guys can see there's like eyelet detail throughout the whole thing. I wear a tank or just like a long, what do they call those balconette bras? The ones that like, it's not just the strap, it like goes down a whole thing. Anyway, I wear that under it and a mini skirt or jeans and it's really cute, very versatile, uh, really good for the summer and quick, it's quick. And that's another thing I love about Kestrel because it's so thick, it knits up so fast. Ugh, I miss the days when I only worked in Kestrel. And then the last one I'm gonna show you in Clinton Co. Kestrel is this one. This is, um, I think this is the only shade of purple I really like, like this really soft lavender. This one is Laguna, Laguna by Elizabeth Smith as well. So the same designer as the last one. And it's uh, obviously oversized, like it's kind of like the boxy, um, it is drop shoulder, but because the, even though it looks so massive, because the arms are so small, like um, the boxy by Hohe, Hohe Cocatelli, am I saying that right? By Hohe, um, because the arms are so small, it doesn't make you look ginormous. It's still really flattering. It just hangs really well. Like it's very fashionable. And yeah, that was the Laguna. I really worked a lot in Quentin Kestrel, a lot. Um, and I, I still have a lot in my stash that I'm planning on using up one day, but I really do recommend, um, I, I used it a lot. I enjoyed working with it. It's, if you want a summer fiber, that kind of linen is a really good place to start. I also have a new example that I haven't tried yet, but this is Antigone from Dararum. Dararum? I don't, I can't pronounce things. It's in the description. This colorway is called Macaron, and it's this really soft grapefruit color, grapefruit almond color, I guess is how I would describe it. I think maybe I'm just saying almond because the colorway is named Macaron and it uses almond flour, I don't know. But it's a soft, really soft grapefruit. And uh, it is 100% linen. It feels very similar to the Quinson Co. linen. This one feels a little bit softer, but I haven't worked it up to the point to block something yet. So I can't say whether or not it is exactly the same. I will say with Quinson Co. linen, that one is definitely 100% organic, if I remember correctly. It, it was 100% organic. So, but this is just another linen example because I know there's been some stuff with Quince and Co. in the community and wherever you fall on that, I don't take a stand. I haven't bought Quince and Co. in many years because I just still have so much in my stash. Wherever you fall on that, I just wanted to show you that there are other linen examples that you can find. It's not just one brand if you don't like how they're aligned. So I really do recommend using linen if you find yourself unable to knit in the summer heat. Because if you want to keep knitting, this is a good way to keep doing it. And uh, 
Oh yeah, this is another new one I wanted to show you. New yarn. Okay, this one is also a summer fiber. This one is from Terrapin Fiberworks. This was my first time ordering from her. Um, this was a pre-order. I waited a few weeks for it and it's on her Severn. S-E-V-E-R-N. Severn. I can't talk. Um, and this is 100% tensile. So I've talked about tensile before and I did like a precursory search of Google afterwards. So tensile is not a, a naturally occurring fiber. It is artificially created. However, it is biodegradable from what I understand. So that means it is technically still more eco-friendly than some other uh, artificial fibers. And um, it, it feels very similar to linen. Um, like you can see, it's got this like really, really strong shine. It has a good twist. It's not um, too twisty. I find that linen to, or linen and silk, I think any summer fiber tends to be really twisty. At least that's just my experience. I might be wrong, um, but that's been my experience of it. It's super shiny. Oh my God, I love it. Um, yeah, and this is uh, from her Bridgerton inspired collection. Um, this colorway is called Deserving. And as you can see, it's pink, it's white, purpley variegation. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it yet. I got this on her DK Severn, wait, base, base. Um, don't know what I'm gonna make with it yet, but I am happy that I have it. I really like this color. I've been thinking about doing just a simple tee because I have too much for a tank. And all these days, because it's so hot, all I find myself wanting to make these tanks and tees, which leads me to my first FO that I'm gonna show you. Ah! I just fell off the hanger. I'll just show it in hand. So this is the George's top, if I can pick it up, Jesus. Um, this is the George's top, it's obviously a tank top and it has these ridiculously oversized bows. So you don't have to do the bows as big as I did. I, um, if you guys haven't noticed, I have a flair for the dramatic and I chose to do big old bows. It just suited me, and I did. Um, she also, th this is by Colibri, by the way, Colibri. And again, everybody's gonna be linked below. But uh, Colibri, uh, we're still in testing for this. It'll be out soon though. I'm thinking by the end of the month, it'll be out. And I did this in Knitting for Olive, the colorway Dusty Artichoke. Thank you for all those who voted in my Instagram stories, by the way. Uh, yeah, so Knitting for Olive Pure Silk is a fingering weight yarn, but since we held it double, it basically becomes DK. So if you have a summery fiber DK lying around, you can absolutely use that, or you can use the suggested yarn, which was Knitting for Olive 100% Pure Silk. And this was my first time actually working with Pure Silk. I really, really loved it. In fact, I liked it so much that I'm casting on a yellow one immediately after. Um, but Colibri has a non-bow version. You just do the tank. And I th I'm thinking about doing just the plain tank on that one uh, because these bows, cute as heck, cute as heck. I love them, zero regrets. But maybe I want something a little bit more understated as well, you know? I feel like this one is a very much, I am the present when I walk into a room. And I kind of want something a little bit quieter, a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's why I'm making another one. Also, I just, I love this color. I was originally planning on doing this in this, but I don't have any of any color like this in my uh, wardrobe already. So I wanted to do it in the Dusty Artichoke. And I'm really glad I did. It's so beautiful. It's very relaxing, very, it's feminine without being in your face, like bubblegum pink. It's just this soft, glamorous feminine. I don't know if I'm making sense to you guys. Um, I tried it on, it looks super cute. I'm really excited to wear it. I'm gonna try to get finished objects while I'm in Denver. And um, I'll show you guys more of it soon. But yeah, this one, it's really fun. It was so quick too, so quick. Like the tank, if you're just doing the tank, you could finish this in like two, three days, honestly. It moves so fast, so fast. Like, um, I got gauge on US 8s, 
US 8. So it, it does move quite quickly. Yeah. And if you do the bow look, the straps, that will take a little bit longer. The straps do take a little bit because they're quite long, deceptively. Like when they're in the bow, you don't realize how long they have to be. But when they're out, oh boy, I would unravel it to show you. But I spent a lot, a lot of time getting these bows really cute because um, I'm not a great bow tire and it took me a lot of effort to get them even looking like this. So I'm just gonna leave it. Just trust me when I say they get long, they get long. Yeah, but they have to in order for you to get this oversized ridiculous look that I went for. Um, not everybody in the test group is choosing to go over the top like me, just so you know, but um, there are options is what I'm trying to say. And like I said, I am casting on a yellow version um, doing a simplified version. I sh have other tests to work on. I just really wanted to something simple to bring to Denver because I'm going to be moving around and it's going to be hot a lot of time. I'm going to be outside for a ton of it because Red Rocks, the uh, venue for the concert is an outdoor venue. So I'm expecting to be quite warm, but I definitely still plan on knitting. Um, so I need a summer fiber and most of the tests, most of the tests, that I have going on right now um, are a bit thick. So I didn't want to bring those. And I'm going to show you some whips in just a second. Um, this is not a thick whip, but this is a whip that I'm working on. This is going to be the Outline Tank by Jesse May. Um, I actually was in the test group of the Outline Tank, if you guys remember. I loved mine, but I made it way too big. I chose the size large and that was way too large. And I actually, I cast on for this one and in my brain, I was like, oh, well you made the last, you made one before. So like, why even gauge swatch? Why check gauge? I was literally like seven inches in before I checked my gauge. Cause I kept looking at it like, huh, this is looking like really big. This is looking really big. I checked my gauge at seven inches in. So like almost to the point where you start working on the, the actual tank part instead of the tube part. And at that point I checked my gauge and I was six stitches off per four inches. That's a lot, that's a lot. So um, I had to go two sizes down because I didn't want to work with US 2s. I was going to still work with US 4s. And um, just, I know I messed up the gauge, but if I size two sizes down, the math worked out. So that's what I'm going with. <laughs> um, if you are a beginner knitter and none of what I'm saying like makes sense to you, you will eventually figure it out. Gauge swatching is just how many stitches per inch. Do the math to see if it lines up. Because if your gauge is off, the way the pattern is written, it's not going to fit you if you chose it originally based on what you, based on the assumption that you would have the same gauge as the designer. That's why checking gauge is important. And um, I should have checked like around here when I was only two, three inches in, and then it wouldn't have been as painful. But checking seven inches in, yeah, yeah, um, that was dumb. That was dumb. Uh, but this yarn is. A mystery. I don't know. I've talked about it before on this episode, uh, maybe not this episode, this podcast. My friend Nicole Greentree sent it to me from Australia. I know it's an Australian dyer. I'm guessing there's bamboo in it because it has a sheen, but it's not, it doesn't feel like silk. I'm guessing bamboo. I have no idea for sure. So I'm sorry that I can't tell you what it is other than beautiful. That's all I got. Yeah, but it will be an outline tank. I, I was hoping to have it done to wear in Denver, but um, considering I get on the plane tomorrow, I don't think that's gonna happen. Um, but you know, best laid plans, I'm just gonna let it go. I'm gonna roll with the punches and let it go. Yeah, um, those are all the whips and old FOs that I wanted to show you guys. All the summary fiber talk is over. Now I'll just talk about other yarn and acquisitions. So really quickly, I got this Monstera stitch marker set from Hello Lavender. Da, 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 da. I really, really love this. Um, I love 
house plants. I have a lot of house plants. Actually, I don't have a lot. I used to, when I lived in Austin, I had like 50 house plants. It was ridiculous. Just strictly speaking, ridiculous. Um, since I moved to Salt Lake, I resisted getting plants for a while, but I've definitely caved since. Um, but I only have about a dozen plants in the whole apartment. And that's a lot better than 50, I will say. Uh, but my, I love house plants and I wanted these Monstera ones from Hello Lavender for a long time. And what I love about these is that um, they use like little waste clay pieces from her other collection. So she just saves the clay and um, uses them later on. So it's a no waste collection and I really love that. And then another one also from Hello Lavender is this citrus set. So um, I just think this is so cute. Yeah, it's it's so summery. I can't wait to wear it, um, to use it like when I'm knitting a summery one. But my thing is I tend to color code my um, projects and with this pink one, it would just clash. So I, I'm waiting for another project um, to use it on, but. I love it. It's so cute. Reshma is so talented. I cannot believe how talented she is. Ugh, right? Okay, now the non, non summary stuff. Okay, so Camellia Fiber Company. Last time I talked about um, Pride and how she has uh, her rainbow sprinkles. So she gave me the DL, the down low. Camellia Fiber Company has a new colorway. She's already announced it, but it's not available to pre-order it yet, but very soon. It's called Magical Rainbow Sprinkles. And it looks like this. So if you guys didn't pay attention from the last one, the way this is different is Magical Rainbow Sprinkles uses neon, neon, sorry, I can't talk right. So normal rainbow sprinkles uses primary color, little delicate sprinkles. This one uses neon sprinkles. And what that means is they are also UV reactive. So if I had a black light right now, I could show you them glowing in the dark, which would be super, super, super cool. That's not to say like UV reactive doesn't mean that in a dark room, your sweater is gonna glow. It has to be under a black light. Um, but it does look really, really cool when it does. And even when there's not a black light, like you can see these adorable little neon speckles, you know? I just, I really love it. And there's a more speckly one here with the pink. Yeah, I'm just, I'm so excited. And I love Camellia Fiber's uh, seasonal specials that she has, especially for Pride. I'm just really excited. And I wanna thank you guys most, most everybody was really wonderful and supportive about my being open about being queer. But um, some people felt the need to like comment like, you're a very talented knitter, but I don't need to hear about anyone's sexuality. Unfollow, and I'm like, thanks for announcing your departure. I love when the trash takes itself out. Um, so I painted my nails, pridey. So um, I'm gayer than ever, sorry. Sorry, I'm in a weird mood, I just, I am never going to apologize for being 100% me. And if you feel that I'm too much of anything, you can just go. Like, that's okay. You're allowed to do that. Just like I'm allowed to just be me. And you don't need to say it. You know what I mean? Just like, hmm. I don't know. Um, another yarn that I got recently is from Sugar Plum Circus. So Jensen of Sugar Plum Circus is actually one of the very first indie yarns that I purchased directly from the dyer. Up to that point, I'd only ever purchased indie yarns through local yarn stores. I didn't even know you could buy directly from yarn dyers. Like I had no idea at the time. And um, she partnered with Annie Haas and that was my very, very first test knit back in I think 2018. Can you believe that was only four years ago? And uh, how many chestnuts have I been in since? I can't even fathom. Um, but yeah, so Jensen was the very first indie yarn dyer I bought directly from on my very first test knit. So I have a very like strong connection to her work. Like it's very nostalgic for me. And she was in town um, at Seed Stitch, the store about 15 minutes out from me. 
And of course I had to go because I haven't met Jensen in person, even though I love her work. So I got to meet her in person and it was lovely. And I got this yarn. This is her uh, fingering weight base. It's just 75, 25, you guys know my favorite base. But this colorway is called Dolce Vita. And it is a very, very soft, neutrally wine pink. It's not wine red, it's wine pink, I like to say. So like when you get a wine stain on a white dress and you wash it like eight times, that's what it looks like. <laughs> In my head anyway. I don't have a lot of wine stains because I'm allergic to alcohol, um, but that's just what I imagine. So that's what I'm gonna go with. And it's really, really beautiful. I love it. There were a lot of other colorways I wanted, so many colorways I wanted, but I really had to resist because Again, I'm going on this Denver trip and I knew I needed to spend money there, a lot of food, a lot of yarn, right? Um, so I really resisted and I only got one sweater quantity. So kudos to me. <laughs> and then the last thing I'm gonna show you guys, I've shown you the yarn before. This is Aztec. Um, the colorway is Aztec on the uh, House Tweed DK from House of All Mode. I got this as part of my Portland haul, you guys remember. And I have started using it. So this one is the very beginning stages of the Brooklyn Raglan by Tori Knits. Tori Knits in New York, uh, NYC. Um, she's the one I did the Butterfly Bloom test knit for uh, earlier in the year. And I really love her design style. This one is going to be a textured raglan. As you can see, it's very clearly a textured raglan. The sleeve texture is actually gonna be um, the same as the Merkel pullover that I showed you guys last time. I just love this texture. There's such a richness to it. It's so homey and such a point of interest that I just am gravitated to it now whenever I see it. And I love the way this is working up, but I do have to say, if you guys didn't see my stories, I confessed that I am a weirdo and I pick out the tweed nubs as I work. So yes, there are still some tweed nubs. I think I pick out like only 50% of the front facing tweed nubs. So if you see the back, it looks a lot more tweedy because I don't care about those. I don't care about those, I'm gonna leave those. But the front, I want it to look a little bit smoother, a little bit more consistent. You guys know I like consistent, I like smooth. It's very important to me. And I did put it in my Instagram stories like a poll. The options were, you know, I want it smooth. Team, I need it smooth. Even though you like the look of tweed, you need it smooth. And the second option was, please go to therapy and or church because y'all are weird. And I will say, it was majority the team smooth. They were gonna pull it out. Maybe not all, and maybe not as aggressively as I do it, but team pulling the little tweed nubs out, one, I just wanna say. But you're right, I do need to go to therapy and I do need to go to church for it, probably, yeah. But <laughs> I'm really excited about that one. Oh, and I wanna show you this stitch marker. The stitch markers are from Denim and Rain. This was her uh, very coveted uh, little sheep stitch marker update. And I missed it because I was late by two minutes. My friend Megan, however, was like on the spot and she got two sets and she gave me one. And that is just the cutest little sheep you ever did see. Yeah, I'm really happy that I got this. Um, I love Denim, Denim and Rain's work. I'm super excited. She has an upcoming collection called like By the Seaside and it looks so pretty. I'm so excited. Um, anyway, that's all I had to show you. I'm gonna have a lot more to talk about when I get back from Denver. My friend Megan is actually gonna come up the stairs at any point. We're gonna go get tacos before I leave town. So um, I love you guys. I'm sorry I sound weird. Apparently I'm gonna be stuck with this thing for another six months before I get like the real implant in. Um, and if you're a dentist, I have to ask, why do we even have teeth? I know I don't, I'm, I'm being facetious. I'm making jokes um, to deal with the pain. Uh, but yeah, just know that, love you guys, stay cool out there, it is so hot. Um, if you feel like you want to share any knits that you've done, you know, tag me on Instagram. Like, don't tag me on giveaways, that's the difference, don't tag me on giveaways. But if you're making something and you want me to see it, tag me, I would love to see it. 
makes me happy. Okay, um, yeah, she's about to come up right now. So love you guys, stay safe.